there is also a, digital, a battle, I should say, in the digital sphere as well. The internet now awash with old conspiracies and new. Anything that could possibly shift the blame from Hamas's brand of radical Islam and place the onus for their atrocities on their Jewish victims instead. Trending on TikTok and promoted fully by the Chinese communist-run platform's algorithms has been Osama bin Laden's letter to the West after his Islamist terrorist group murdered more than 3,000 American civilians on, October, on September 11th. It's a letter in which he said the reason was because the U.S. supports Israel and blamed the Jews for all the world's ills. It's a letter not being parroted as, now being parroted, I should say, as eye-opening by Western Generation Z leftists. But the attacks are also coming from the right. Elon on Musk implying on his platform X that the demented and murderous ideology now being spouted by radicalized leftists was created by the Jews in the first place. Well, to discuss just what is wrong with people today, we are joined by Gilly Fleekop, the founder of the Pink Chili Agency and Internet Researcher, joining us from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Gilly, thanks for being with us. First question I ask there, what is wrong with young people today? The question I, I find myself as a young person trying to grapple with. So first of all, Ariel, thank you for having me. I think uh, to say that I'm disgusted is not a big enough word of what's happening right now on social media, on TikTok specifically, on X. Um, this trend that we're seeing since has been removed and all of the hashtags and posts have been removed on TikTok. Uh, but the fact that we got there and the fact that so many young people, so many Gen Z TikTokers and consumers get their news source, they learn about historical conflicts, mostly from TikTok, is really, really frightening to see such a letter go viral and see people sympathize and empathize with a terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda, and bin Laden himself. And it's worth noting, because you mentioned how young people are getting their worldview and their information from TikTok, that the actual accounts on there of pro-Israel to anti-Israel are about 1 versus 15. So it is a cavalcade of misinformation that flat out denies, in many cases, the October 7th atrocities. And much of this is being promoted by the Chinese Communist Party. You know, there's, there's, there's so much... You know, it's very convoluted. There's a lot of when you look at platforms and algorithms and the way they, the way they work, it's extremely complicated. But I think um, TikTok has since removed it. I'm, I'm more disgusted by X right now. I mean, Elon Musk's uh, tweet supporting uh, another tweet that was very, uh, you know, ins insinuating the great replacement theory is still there. He hasn't retracted the tweet. It has millions of views. Um, and I think that we have to call these platforms and these leaders of these platforms responsible to, to regulate, it. you know, free speech is one thing, but hate speech is not free speech. And we need to take the right measures to remove any hate speech from every single social media platform. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I did want to transfer from the uh, Twitter the TikTok to Twitter, because we have talked pretty much ad nauseum about the, the radical left and their oppressor dynamics leading to this sort of uh, thoughts. But on X and on many of the right-wing holes on the internet, we are seeing the old adages, the old forms of anti-Semitism, the classical protocols of the elders of Zion raise its ugly head as well. How are these just converging in the modern era to bring all of the old lies back to life and mix with the news? You know, it reminds me, I was on I-24 not too long ago, and we spoke about um, X and anti-Semitism. You know, this is not new, first of all, in general, but specifically in X. I mean, Elon Musk, uh, you know, tw in 2018, uh, he I remember him supporting sort of tweet that implied that Jews run the media. I mean, it's it's always been there, and I and I always quote Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, it's, it's a virus that mutates anti-Semitism. It shows different forms, um, and it's just now recirculating in digital forms, um, and it's, it's really frightening to see specifically Specifically, when we see that so many young people, I always say 40% of Gen Z, prefers to use platforms like TikTok as their search engine of choice. They're looking at um, TikTok to get their news. Now, you, you brought up the issue that we're faced with in the Western world, and that's as liberal democracies, we believe in free speech. But at the same time, misinformation is going to shift people's voting habits. They're not making free choices if they've been lied to. How do you even begin to draw a line and create policy that protects liberty while also protecting the integrity of your own choice? 
I think when you look at, you know, free speech, if I, you know, if I walked into a, a crowded room and, and shouted fire, that would obviously seem uh, as a irresponsible and not a strong and moral use of free speech. Same with, you know, claiming that elections are rigged. Um, I'm, I'm almost positive that most platforms would not allow such sentiment. And I think understanding that the way that we view free speech regulations in real life, if it puts someone in danger, if it incites violence in some way, and as soon as it gets into that type of, you know, leaning towards that, then we need to regulate it. And there's so much hate speech on these platforms that's just completely unregulated. The ADL is reporting, you know, giving out reports continuously about which social media platforms um, are still allowing posts that have Holocaust denial. X is one of them, right? And it's it's really frightening. And I think, you know, I'm no politician. And, and when it comes to, you know, regulations and creating the, the laws to kind of um, regulate everything, but I would say similar to how we regulate in real life to make sure that, you know, speech is not provided, pro promoting violence, um, I think it's really important. And you, you mentioned Holocaust denial at the end there, Gillian. So many of us wondered how people can deny with the amount of evidence we have. Now we see people denying in real time live stream videos. It's just an uphill battle, it feels like. Gillian, thanks for help us explain just what's going on there, even if there's not really any happy ending to that story.